Welcome back. On our explainer tonight, we continue to keep an eye on issues that affect you and particularly the locust invasion. The locusts continue to ravage several parts of the counties. In fact, the number of counties affected by desert locusts has risen from three to 17 in the last three months, with fears that the number could rise in the coming days. Now, according to the latest data from the Ministry of Agriculture and FAO, that's the Food and Agricultural Organization, in terms in terms of land mass, 75% of the country is affected. The government says it has engaged the services of 600 NYS servicemen and women in dealing with the pest in six counties that have been hardest hit. The administrative secretary in the State Department of Crops, Kelo Harsama, says the pest is a major threat to food security in the country. We have used five aircrafts including some from the military, to spray uh, uh, the locusts and kill them in the counties of Marsabit, Isiolo, Samburu, Kitui, uh, Machakos, and some others. You have been chosen to go to six counties uh, in the country. We believe that the six counties are largely the epicenter of uh, the locust prevalence. All right, so I want you to take a look at uh, the map right now. So, of course, this, once again, in case you've forgotten, this is the exact species that we're dealing with here in the country, Schistocerca gregaria. Now, I would like us to take a look at the map. Remember, this is something we've been keeping an eye on here on the explainer. So remember, I did this explainer about three weeks ago in late January. OK, so I want to show you a comparison of these maps. OK, so take a look at this. This was earlier in late January. Remember, as we said, they came in from Somalia on the 28th of December. They came down through the northeastern region and were not quite in central Kenya yet. And then they started making their way up to Turkana and possibly out to Uganda. So this was around the 27th of January when they got to Machakos. Now I want to move this and show you what it looks like today. All right. So let me just see if I can enlarge that for you. So take a look at what that is looking like here. If I can get my camera, I don't know if you can see this um, clearly. Let's try and uh, zoom into this picture. And I've also zoomed it in here for you to see. 17 counties now affected. Mandera, Wajir, Isiolo, Masabit, Samburu, Meru, Garissa. Now Kitui, Tharaka, Embu, Machakos, Makweni, and Kajado as late as the 7th of February. Muranga, Laikipia, Baringo, Samburu, Masabit, Turkana. And then around the 6th of February, as you can see here, let me just uh, move this a little bit. They started to move into Uganda. But what I'm told is that this is not over yet. So this is what the map looked like. And to put these side by side. Okay, so do you see that? This is what it looked like with the red arrows earlier in January. This is what it looks like now. These maps and this information is courtesy of the Food and Agriculture Organization who have been keeping an eye on this. But what does this mean for food security in the country? And I want to speak to Timothy Njagi, who is a research fellow at Tegemeo Institute. Mm -hmm. Timothy, it's good to have you on the show once again. Yes, so let's talk about how serious this is. Should we be worried, Timothy, considering mm -hmm. last year we had bouts of drought yeah. and floods and now this locust invasion. Yeah, I think it's something that we need to be worried about. And to put it into context is that uh, one swarm is said to contain between 40 to 60 million locusts. Yeah. And uh, a 40 million swarm can eat what 35,000 people can eat in a day. Yes. So that, does, that actually shows that we actually need to pay attention to this. Actually, when you look at your map, one of the things that you notice is that uh, the locusts are mainly in the arid and semi-arid areas. Eh? So they are not yet started moving to the high potential crop, crop growing areas. Eh? So what does this mean in terms of food security? Uh, by December last year, uh, 
we had very good rainfall even in the arid and semi-arid areas and this rain this rains persisted to to actually january and uh, some in it's actually going on up to february yeah. and what that did is that uh, it raised the amount of order that is available in in this can, in this in these counties eh? ordinarily that would be very good news yeah but then of course given that uh, we have huge swarms coming in we still have the swarms multiplying within the country then this poses a risk because uh within a very short time they can wipe away all the forage mm. that has been generated by the and it's interesting because they're eating fodder as well exactly um yeah. you yeah. know which then talks about like food for livestock yeah. um but so i know you said that you know it's largely affected the arid yeah. and semi-arid areas from the map we've seen it's you know many of the northeastern counties yeah. but from you know the others kitui machakos moranga embu yeah. what food crops are likely to be affected so most of the low cent, lower lower eastern and uh, the central part of kenya i think if you look at most of the commodities that they are growing right now i think they are harvesting grain uh, we talk about uh, maize we talk about green grams uh, millet, sorghum, that is a com most of the, I mean, that is the commonly grown commodities in these areas. So right now they're supposed to be harvesting and uh, to start preparing for the next uh, season. And uh, there are two things that have happened. Of course, we have the locust invasion, although we know that in the Lower Eastern, uh, it, it, it is yet to be categorized as a risk to crops. According to the FAO, the areas that have s s uh, significant threat uh, to crops are still the northern counties. Eh? But then you also have to remember that there's also a lot of uh, agro agro pastoralism yeah. so we have pastoralists who at the same time grow crops uh, around garissa mandera wajir right. so the crops along the, the the northern frontier is actually at risk including samburu but then for the lower eastern it's here to get to that part but then one of the other things that we know is that uh, the extended rains so it's also a threat to the grains because uh, that is now where we start talking about aflatoxin for right. uh, commodities like maize. So there is also need to make Storage, sure that eh? yeah, farmers are able to dry the grain and store it as well as as you continue monitoring uh, the threat that can be posed by the locust. And, and you know the context you're, you're painting is that you know the locust invasion is coming in with the erratic weather patterns so yeah. at the time that they're supposed to be harvesting yeah. you know there's lots of yeah, rainfall yeah. so that means you know the drying process has to be you know extremely careful and monitored yeah. and so I mean the locust invasion certainly exacerbates yeah, the problem, the problem exactly. um, but we hear the locusts are also reproducing and that there might be a second a second, a second swarm wave. or yes. a second wave, wave of the yeah. invasion yeah, that, actually that's that's the current position yeah. and I think one of the things that uh, we allowed the government from doing is we saw today they started training the NYS officers and the reason why this is important is because one we know that uh, when you look at the ag sector we don't have people on the ground eh? most of the extension workers we know that uh, mm. we don't have enough staff to, to do the monitoring and actually it makes sense to spray them when they're still on the ground so like what they're doing is that the what they're training the nys uh, service so basically uh, officers they're training them to monitor so okay. once they see where they are breeding uh, and before the locusts you know go airborne that should be the time that we should actually do the spraying uh -huh. once they go airborne they are they, it poses risk that one we are not just spraying locusts we're also spraying other insects most of which are actually helpful for the ecosystem and for a, a sustainable production environment so the the control is very effective before they actually go to the I mean they become airborne before they we have a lot around four weeks okay. uh, from the time the eggs hatch to the time they go airborne uh -huh. so that the, the, the training actually is to help monitor and identify the breeding sites so that they can actually be spread in those areas. So that is, um, shall we say, short term, like short -term, for yeah. now. Yeah. So what, what needs to happen going forward? Uh, what measures need to be put in place by government, other stakeholders, yeah. FAO, you know, mm. has, has been doing this for a while. Private sector, yeah. we understand, is also, you know, heavily involved. Yeah. Yeah. So what needs to happen now going forward? I think for, for, for this pest, uh, the desert locusts, I think one of the most effective ways of control is available. Uh, once you're able to monitor the swarms, and the swarms, remember, like the swarms that came in in December, I think they were being told that they came from as far as Yemen. Mm. So we need to monitor the peninsula uh, and make sure that the breeding grounds are identified, the, the numbers are actually counterchecked, and the, the control is done at that particular point before they start moving in. Right now, if you look at the maps that FAO is showing, 
uh, as a result of poor monitoring uh, last uh -huh. year and then coupled with the climate issues like yes. the two cyclones we had, mm -hmm. we are now having problems both in East Africa and Southeast Asia. So we still have issues again in India and Pakistan. And then globally, of course, we know that has a has a huge threat for global food security. Right. So, I mean, you know, global measures and, and, yes. and, and cross sort of border um, doing. But then, so the mitigation, because I think the biggest thing that Kenyans worry about is will this increase uh, yeah. the price of food, maize, mm. maize flour, beans, perhaps yeah. tomatoes food yeah. you know and everything so yeah. to mitigate perhaps the effects so for, for food prices i think uh we, we, it's something that we need to monitor but what we need to what what we can also need to understand is that because of the the changing climate and the changing patterns in weather we had a delayed uh, long rain harvest yeah and then we also now have a delayed short rain harvest mm. and we saw for example prices in december were a bit high but that was mainly because of the 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 long rain harvest the delayed long rain harvest and we also know that uh, from from the long rain season uh, we had a, a huge area of cropland that was destroyed by the flooding i think from the yeah. october november december rains uh, it was estimated that about 10000 acres, acres yes. of cropland was, was destroyed right. and right now we are not yet sure how much we've lost as a result of uh, the they have i mean the rains that are happening during the mm. harvesting season so being able to monitor that and put together uh, will, able, will allow us to see whether whatever you're producing this year would actually be enough. But from the outlook uh -huh. that was done at the beginning of the season last year, yeah. I think this season was not going to be a productive season compared to 2018. Okay. So we still expected uh, some deficits uh, for key commodities like maize and Irish potatoes. Okay. Uh, what we need to verify now is how what is the size of that deficit right. and what we need to do in terms of either importing from the region or getting it outside the region. Okay. And of course, um, the full effects of uh, the damage of, of the, of locust, the locust invasion, invasion will also be yeah. something to take a look at. Timothy, yeah. as always, yeah. thank you so much uh, yeah. for joining us. Timothy Njagi, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, he's a research fellow at Tegemeo Institute, just explaining to us the effects of the locust invasion on food security. It's something we'll continue to keep an eye on as we do here on The Explainer, issues that affect you every day. Timothy, thank you. Thank you. We want to take a break. And then come back with more news here tonight.